Greetings and salutations to my church family, to my Facebook family, and to my YouTube family, and soon to come my podcast family. Welcome to another edition of Moments with the Master. Moments with the Master was primarily designed to help you and to encourage you by coming to you each and every Monday and Friday at 8 a.m. to ask you, to request of you, to take time or take a moment with the Master. Beloved, there is a word from the Lord this morning found in the folds of James chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Somebody has sagaciously suggested that the world's smallest and yet largest troublemaker is the human tongue. Please say that again, Brother Minister. I'll be glad to do so. Someone has sagaciously suggested that the world's smallest yet largest troublemaker is the human tongue. Beloved, as I was preparing for this segment of Moments with the Master, I was reading and researching, and I came across a quote that's very interesting, intriguing, and most instructive. Long before we quarantined because of COVID-19, and before this epidemic became a pandemic, the average person would have 30 conversations in a day. I read that the average person on an average has 30 conversations per day. If that's true, that means that we spend one fifth of our time of our day talking. And that leaves a whole lot of room for our mouths to get us in trouble to get us in trouble. The odds, beloved, are against us in terms of our mouths getting us in trouble. The question then becomes, how does divinity purpose to help us manage our mouths? Our mouths have to be managed and they have to be managed properly. I've learned <clears throat> And we've learned from our last segment of Moments with the Master, we learned a very powerful yet practical principle. And that powerful practical principle says to us that what the heart conceals, the mouth will reveal. Jesus talking to the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 12 around verse 34 Jesus helps us out and sets out this principle. And he says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, he says, whatever is in the heart will determine what we say. Whatever is in your heart will determine what you will say. Divinity helps us manage our mouths by sharing with us tidbits of grace in regard to managing our mouth. Jesus points to the fact that the heart of the problem is the matter of the heart. The heart of the problem is the problem of the heart. In other words, it's not our mouths that are getting us in trouble, it's really our hearts, because our mouths reveal what is concealed in the heart. What is concealed in the heart. Let me put a window here so Pookie and them can see this. Pookie, what I'm trying to say here when I say whatever is in the heart determines what we say, picture, if you will, a well. Whatever's down in the well Pookie, whatever's down in the well will come up in the bucket. Yeah, yeah, I, I think Pookie can see that. Whatever's down in the well will come up 
in the bucket. James begins revealing to us four fundamental uh, forms of speech. He really talks about four powers, four abilities of the tongue that resides in the tongue. There are four powers, there are four abilities, and James, like a Philadelphia lawyer, begins to lay out to us that there are four fundamental forms of speech. There are four powers that it resides in the tongue. Now, I want to take my time here because if you don't get this, you won't get that. And if you don't get that, you won't get this. It's important that we understand the four fundamental forms of speech according to the Bible. There are four forms. You notice I continue to repeat myself because I recognize as a teacher that repetition is a teacher's best friend. How many? There are four fundamental forms of speech according to the word of God. Now, the first form of speech, the first fundamental form of speech, the powers and the abilities that reside in the tongue, the tongue has the power, the tongue has the ability to direct, to direct. The first fundamental form of speech for the tongue is to direct. Red. The second fundamental form of speech, the second power or ability of the tongue is to destroy, is to destroy. You have within the power of your speech and tongue to direct or to destroy. The third fundamental form of speech, the third power or ability of the tongue is to deceive, is to deceive, deceive. And the last and yet final uh, fundamental form of speech is the tongue has the power, the tongue has the ability to develop and delight, develop and delight. So what are the four fundamental forms of speech according to the Bible, according to James chapter 1, verses 1 through 12? To direct, to destroy, to deceive, and to develop, and to delight. Don't miss this, beloved. You have, within the power and ability of your tongue, to use it to direct, to use it to destroy, to use it to deceive, or you can use it to develop and to delight. Now, how is this so? Look at it, if you will. James uses 12 long verses to express and explain to us the powers that reside in the tongue, in the tongue. I said the first fundamental form of speech was to direct, to direct. That's careful speech. That's controlled speech. Careful and controlled speech will allow you, will allow you to direct, to direct, to direct. Don't miss this. Careful and controlled speech will give you the power to direct, according to verse number two and verse number three in the book of James. Now, not only do you have within the power and ability of the tongue to direct careful speech, controlled speech, there is careless speech or uncontrolled speech. Careless speech and uncontrolled speech gives you the power to destroy. It gives you the power to destroy. What gives you the power to destroy? That's careless and uncontrolled speech. You will have within the power of your tongue 
to destroy, to destroy. Thirdly, one of the powers, one of the abilities uh, is not only careful speech and careless speech, there's conflicting speech. Conflicting speech from the tongue will give you the power, give you the ability to deceive. When your words are at odds with your actions and your actions are at odds with your words, that's conflicting. And conflicting uh, words are deceptive. They're deceptive and gives you the power, gives me the power to deceive, to deceive. And last but not least, we have careful words. We have careless words. We have conflicting words, but last but not least, we have constructive words, constructive words. Constructive words will allow you to develop and delight the God of heaven and develop others. In other words, you'll be able to do somebody some good and give God the glory because you can develop and delight the very throne of heaven. So there are four fundamental forms of speech. There's careless speech. There's careful speech. There is conflicting speech. And last but not least, there is constructive speech. Constructive speech will allow you to develop and delight the very throne of heaven. Conflicting speech gives you the power to deceive, and careless speech will give you the power to destroy, and careful speech will give you the power to direct, to direct. How do you spend your day when you're talking? Are you using careful speech? Are you directing people in the right direction? Are you using careless speech? You're destroying reputations and destroying the influence of others. Or do you use conflicting speech? Spend your time deceiving people. And you know it's one thing, but you say another thing. Or do you spend your day using constructive speech, developing others, and giving God glory with your tongue? Well, beloved, the Bible compares the tongue, and I'm getting ready to close here because I see my time is just about up. <clears throat> listen, listen. The Bible compares the tongue to a tiny spark, a tiny spark. And that's all it takes. That's all that is needed to start an enormous forest fire. If you don't believe me, ask the citizens of California. That enormous forest fire began with a tiny spark and words provide the tiny spark needed to start an enormous forest fire. Matter of fact, the Bible says that we become verbal arsonists. We provide that tiny spark needed with our words. My question to you is, have you ever met a verbal arsonist? Well, you will in our next installment of Moments with the Master. We're going to take a look at verbal arsonists who began enormous forest fires, that began enormous fires and literally burn up their world with a tiny spark called a word. Well, I see that my time is up. It's far better to have God and not need him than to need God and not have him. If you walk with God, my God will walk with you. Till we meet again, God bless.